um, good morning and uh, good evening uh, for those who are joining from other time zones. Um, I'm Robert Desharic from Temple University. I'm extremely happy to welcome my colleague and also my friend, Michael Chuchek, professor at Temple University, Japan. I think Michael needs no introduction as the leading expert on Japanese politics in Tokyo. And um, without further ado, I will give him the floor just to tell you that first, this is being recorded. At one point, we will post it on our website. And also, if you haven't done so yet, uh, please uh, mute your microphones. So Michael will give his talk, and then we will go through a Q&A session. Thank you, Michael. The floor is yours. Thanks again. OK, thank you, uh, and everyone, for coming together today. Uh, I am deeply honored uh, by this opportunity and by your interest uh, in uh, uh, my talk. Uh, I'm going to put up some, some slides. I have only a few, um, which is very much unlike me. Usually uh, I'm uh, rushing through a lot of slides and instead I'd like to hear questions uh, about uh, the upcoming uh, election uh, and also about the results of this most recent uh, selection process for a president of the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, the LDP. So without much ado, uh, I will go to share and uh, start my slideshow. And I, I agree, it's going to be brief and, and not terribly detailed uh, to, so as to maximize uh, the discussion time, which is, is very important. All right, uh, I hope everyone can see uh, this uh, first initial slide. And uh, all right, so uh, if uh, there. All right. Um, all right. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Michael Chuchek. Uh, I am an assistant professor of Asian studies at Temple University of Japan. Uh, I have uh, been there since 2016, uh, mostly as an adjunct, uh, but uh, in 2020, I uh, became an assistant professor. Uh, my major interests are Japanese history and uh, Japanese politics, and uh, in fact, my time at ICAS, I mean, my, my time at Temple uh, began uh, with uh, my first course was uh, my standard course on an introduction to Japanese politics. So I'm going to talk about uh, the most recent LDP uh, presidential election, which uh, was uh, for me very surprising uh, and uh, very shocking. And I chose as a, a, a provocative title, a, a quotation from an REM song, uh, the end of the LDP as we know it, uh, hoping and thinking that I understood what was going on uh, in terms of uh, the selection process that was ongoing. Uh, now, uh, we will see if I was in any way uh, even close to understanding the process. Uh, but a, a short review. Uh, the assumptions that I make about the way that the LDP recently has chosen uh, its uh, leaders uh, is based uh, on the, uh, just a few ideas. Uh, the first of which is that the Secretary General of the LDP, uh, in particular the person uh, Nikai Toshihiro, uh, has been a major power broker in terms of arranging the uh, either the extension or the transition of power uh, from one person to another. The second assumption that I based uh, my ideas on uh, is that the LDB factions are not uh, today fundamentally aggressive, uh, conflictional uh, entities. They are in fact by contrast, peacemaking entities within the LDP. They allow for a system of dividing up the spoils, whether it is positions in the national government or uh, positions within the party, in a structured, regularized, and very visible way. The number of persons in a faction is the indication of the faction's power. 
and that that power must be reflected uh, in the way that the spoils are distributed, no matter who's doing the distributing. And for me, the factions have always served as this in this purpose of clarifying how divisions will be made and tamping down uh, internal uh, fights within the LDP. The uh, third uh, assumption uh, is that the LDP uh, has a tradition uh, of very rapid turnover uh, in its leaders. And indeed in the premiership in Japan, even prior to the existence of the LDP, prime ministers tended to last a, a very short amount of time, somewhere between a, a year and two years uh, with some glaring exceptions. Uh, Sato Eisaku uh, in the 1960s, Nakasone Yasuhiro in the uh, 1980s, and uh, Koizumi Junichiro uh, in the 2000s. But otherwise, a, a, there was a panoply of very short-lived premierships. That uh, turnover reflected the intense competition between leaders to grab the brass ring of the LDP presidency. And by that means grabbing uh, the premiership as the LDP was the dominant party uh, in uh, Japanese politics. Since uh, 2012, however, with the advent of the second Abe administration, uh, the bias is much more towards stability and that they, uh, there is a wish on the part of the LDP uh, to emphasize that it is the party of stability, that it is the party of uh, long-term planning. We'll see how that goes. And finally, that uh, the, uh, the current uh, environment in Japanese politics is dominated by the Hosoda faction, the Seiwakai, uh, which has basically held the premiership during LDP rule uh, since the year uh, 19, uh, 2000. Uh, and uh, that it had indeed uh, developed with the Nikai faction led by an interloper, Nikai Toshihiro, who actually started outside the party uh, into a uh, very strong encomium that worked towards uh, a very, very stable uh, block of votes inside the House uh, of Representatives and, and House of Councillors that when there would be some kind of conflict within the, uh, the party, that there would be a bulwark of votes to protect, in this case, uh, Abe Shinzo, the, the, uh, the prince of the Seiwakai. Now, when Abe Shinzo became ill uh, and resigned for the second time, uh, this encomium arranged for the, the elevation of the chief cabinet secretary, Suga Yoshihide, uh, to the premiership. It was a done deal and there was hardly any uh, resistance. And when they did have an election, it was overwhelming in, uh, in uh, uh, Suga Yoshihide's favor. Uh, but uh, in contrast to the long-term stability uh, plot that had become uh, supposedly the goal, the premiership of Suga Yoshihide was very brief. I have here a, a graph of the NHK uh, cabinet popularity ratings published on a monthly basis uh, for the last 11 premiers. Uh, and uh, they tend to start out Along the bottom is the uh, is the number of months that they're in office, and I, I've cut off had a cutoff date here of eighteen months. Uh, the the careers of uh, of uh, Koizumi and of Abe in his second term uh, extend well beyond uh, this graph. But you see that that for most premiers uh, they start out somewhere in the sixties in terms of support, and then uh, enter a terminal uh, state of decline. Uh, resulting in eventually a passage down below uh, the 30% line, which I have in indicated in red here, uh, so basically a death line uh, for uh, a premiership. And very frequently uh, they are forced to, or they voluntarily resign. 
And this is true whether they were DPJ uh, or Democratic Party of Japan or LDP uh, premiers. So Suga's tenure uh, started out in this 60% range. He is here in the, in the, in the bold red line. And uh, over the course of the year uh, began deteriorating in the traditional way, contrary to the more recent stability that has existed uh, in, the, uh, in the premiership. This led Nikai uh, to a series of desperate moves uh, in the months of August, uh, in the, at the end of the last weeks of August, trying all kinds of crazy ideas on how to avoid having even having an LDP presidential election, which was required by the bylaws of the party. Uh, he, all his different schemes and stratagems came to nothing. And it is possible that by trying desperately to hold on uh, as the leader uh, of the party and also to have uh, Suga continue on as, as uh, the party's president, uh, that he alienated uh, virtually everyone. And, and that uh, one of the explanations for the election that we've had was Nikai's uh, resentment against Nikai's manipulations. Now, the revolt against uh, Nikai was not led, strangely, by other faction leaders. Nikai is a faction leader in addition, wasn't uh, in addition to being the, the uh, secretary general. The revolt was led primarily, according to press reports, by the so-called third termers, uh, the 84 members of the House of Representatives who are in their third term as a member of the House. In other words, they are persons who gained their seats in the wipeout election of 2012, which brought, uh, our, brought Abe Shinzo back to power from out of the wilderness. Uh, ostensibly, they should be uh, fundamentally deeply loyal to Abe Shinzo and his Seiwakai. Uh, but uh, it seemed that they were far more worried about, at least in the months, early weeks of September, the possibility that they would lose their seats. For these, uh, these particular members are uh, considered particularly vulnerable. They are persons who won their seats back from the DPJ and its successor parties uh, in the 2012 election. So they're basically in swing districts. They therefore uh, are worried that if there is an unpopular man leading the, and, and I say the word man because they've all been men, leading the LDP, uh, that, uh, this, uh, sit, that they would be on the cusp of potentially losing their seats. Which made the eventual results uh, that came out on September 29th of, of the election of, of, of the president by the Diet members, a very, very surprising uh, total. The assumption had been that if we're going to save ourselves, uh, we need to have a dramatic, flamboyant, interesting leader. And that leader was, was supposed to be Kono, Kono, uh, Kono Otaro, a, who is a charming, flamboyant, uh, Twitter savvy, fun person. Uh, and uh, strangely, even though the Diet's members supposedly thought, we need to save ourselves, we need a popular person, they absolutely did not vote for Kono. He eventually received only 86 votes. This was particularly uh, confusing because polling done by media organizations prior to the election among Diet members indicated that he had over 100, possibly over 115 members who were going to vote for him. But on the day of the election, uh, when the vote totals were announced, there were gasps in the room, ho, oh! when uh, it turned out that there were only 86 votes for him. Uh, now, the, the, the big surprise uh, was the number of votes for uh, Takaichi Sanai, uh, the former Minister of Internal Affairs and Communications, former uh, chairman of the 
Policy Affairs Research Council of the LDP, uh, and uh, the first really serious woman candidate ever, uh, that she well surpassed him uh, in, in the number of votes, again, was a tremendous surprise to everyone. Because again, in, pre, uh, uh, in, in early polling, she was supposedly somewhere around 80 individuals. So the numbers were reversed. And the question is, how did this happen? Uh, how did the LDP, which was supposed, the younger members uh, who were supposedly in a vulnerable position, how did they not turn out for Kono? And where were these persons who were voting, who were, didn't, didn't tell the press that they were voting for Takaichi? What, what was the deal here? If you were taught, look, if you were in the, reading the newspapers around the middle of September, the race looked, and this is when I was writing the uh, title of this uh, talk, the race looked like uh, a basic race between uh, Ishida and Kono, uh, with Kono most likely to win uh, the th then 383, later 382 votes that were necessary, uh, that were uh, uh, in the, the diet, uh, that Kono would win the ones that were available uh, from the party members. The party uh, vote is split. Here it's black and white, which is kind of unfair. Uh, the diet members are not that dark, uh, but uh, the diet member vote uh, is 383 votes. That's the number of members of the diet who are members of the LDP. And a, a mirror image uh, number of votes is uh, available uh, in the, uh, from the prefectural offices through votes cast by friends of the party and members of the party. The, the idea was that Kono would win among the friends and among the members, and that indeed did happen uh, in terms of the outcomes that were there. Uh, if you can see here in the party member votes, Kono finished well ahead of, of, of Ishida uh, and well ahead, very far ahead of Takaichi. Uh, but uh, in terms of the members of the diet, it was, uh, well, okay, Ishida has an advantage, but Kono's to number two and Takaichi's number three. And that there were a number of diet members who were not yet committed, but that this would be the general split. Uh, and indeed, uh, in this article, for example, from the Mayanichi Shimbun of uh, the 19th of September, Kishida has secured over 30% of the members of the diet voting for him. Kono has uh, an, in the high 20% and Takaichi is over uh, 20%. But when the votes came through, uh, it was nowhere near those percentages uh, for Takaichi and for Kono. Uh, Takaichi had well outperformed uh, the just over 20% line uh, out of the 382, and, and Kono had vastly uh, underperformed. If he had, you know, 30% would have been 115 votes, he was far below that. Uh, and th the questions began, okay, what the heck happened uh, in this election with the diet members? Uh, Kono's popular among the pop people and uh, we, got, we got that right, but why did we get the, the uh, numbers of diet members so wrong? Uh, and there've been a number of theories that have been thrown out. Uh, one of them, uh, which is this one, uh, from uh, the, for, the uh, very famous former uh, bureaucrat at uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, made famous uh, by the Kakegakuen scandal and also uh, other uh, scandals. Uh, the commentator Maika Kihei said that this was an everything, everything is Corona race. That Kono Yohei and, and sorry, I, I said his father's name out of habit, uh, Kono Taro, uh, rose up along with the numbers of uh, corona cases. That Suga became, un he was no longer viable as a premier as the numbers climbed up above 5,000 infections per day here in, 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 in Tokyo. Uh, and the search was on for a hero, a savior, and the hero and the most obvious hero and savior, according to Mayakawa, and others was Kono Taro, the 
vaccine czar for the Japanese government, whose vaccine uh, leadership of the vaccine program was initially criticized, but is now seen to have been a tremendous success. And that when things were bad in terms of infections, those were great for Kono's political chances because he was seen as someone who was uh, working very hard for uh, the betterment of the people and uh, unlike Suga was very much aware of how bad things were. Unfortunately, according to Maikawa, for Kono's chances in the, in the election, the number of infections began going down. The, the uh, fifth wave uh, receded. And as conditions got better and better throughout the country, we just left the state of emergency, uh, that uh, the need to have a hero as what happened in the year 2001 with the election of Koizumi Jinichiro amid the crisis that existed then, the need for a new hero receded. And members of the third termers uh, inside the LDP started to think more along faction lines, that is to say, vertical divisions in the party. And there's the, the Hosoda faction. Uh, the former Takeshita faction, uh, the faction uh, of the current prime minister Kishida. And they had begun thinking along horizontal lines of generations within the party uh, that that generational thinking went away and they went back to their default thinking, I'm in this faction, I have to support my faction's candidate, whoever that is, and that the leaders will tell me that. And that's Mayakawa's uh, story about how Kono was misunderstood to be, by the press, to be the savior for the LDP. And uh, that uh, his actual unpopularity uh, was masked. There are others who say that uh, he was abandoned uh, by, his support, by some of his supporters for, in, in some instances, an explanation is that he talked about the fact that the actually the party doesn't do a lot of policy making anymore. It's all done by advisory councils working out of the uh, the prime minister's uh, residence, which is true. Uh, but you don't say that kind of thing when you're trying to get people to vote for you. Uh, and uh, another explanation was the prominence of uh, rather disliked individuals. Uh, who are nevertheless seen as threats to the uh, major powers in the party, and that it would be uh, former Secretary General uh, Ishiba Shigeru and the son of Koizumi Jinichiro, Koizumi Shinjiro, uh, who very visibly and very forcibly and very, very upfront were supporting Kono. And that, according to the, the story, is that put off a lot of people. You know, I'm, I want to vote for Kono. But what I'm getting is Ishiba and Koizumi, and I didn't, I didn't, I don't want them. And that there was that that kind of emotional reaction that caused the uh, the collapse in the Kono uh, candidacy. The, I think there's there's more to it than that. I think that uh, there was a concerted effort on the part of the Sewakai and uh, conservatives to actually play with the press's minds. And my indications for that are the uh, is the campaign that Takaichi uh, Sanai, uh, who is a well known uh, reactionary uh, figure, uh, the campaign that she she ran, uh, it, it fe featured very little in the way of traditional uh, trying to appeal to a broad range of different groups. Uh, instead, it was very narrowly focused on attracting similar reactionary, so-called in, in Japanese politics, revisionist uh, persons who, among other uh, ideas, want to revise the Article 9 of the Constitution, uh, that, that was a, there would be a pure appeal to those individuals, even though that would not lead to a victory in the, in the party presidential race, uh, in some kind of pro basically provocative uh, team building exercise. And we have all kinds of evidence of that. Now, for example, uh, two of the most bizarre are was for, on, the, on the what's here on the left, uh, a Zoom call was arranged for Takaichi uh, by her supporters, 
uh, with Tsai Ing-wen of Taiwan, whom at last time I looked does not vote in the LDP elect uh, presidential election. Uh, another strange event, this one organized inside the Diet uh, office building, the Yin Kaikong, uh, was bringing in uh, a whole bunch of activists fighting for uh, democracy in Hong Kong, uh, for the freedom of the Uyghur people in Xinjiang, uh, for a free Tibet, and uh, then marching in uh, Takaichi for a photo shoot. Uh, again, a very peculiar uh, means of, of trying to get votes in a party presidential election. And there were also times when the things she did were simply inexplicable. I have yet to find, for example, an explanation of uh, this particular image uh, where uh, at the National Press Club, it's traditional that uh, the various candidates uh, 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 do a joint press conference at the National Press Club uh, as a part of the ritual of running for the LDP presidency. Uh, and there, and another part of the ritual is they're asked to write on a piece of cardboard, uh, well, a nice piece of cardboard, that uh, a, a, a slogan, a thought, a, a, a favorite uh, Chinese character. And for the other uh, three in the race, aside from Takaichi, uh, they were, things made perfect sense. Uh, Konotaro here on the left has warmth, which is at once, I'm a warm individual, which is true, and also his worries about global uh, climate change. Uh, in the case uh, of Kishida, it's actually a, a, a set phrase, but uh, which appeal, it says that the clothes of, uh, of, of heaven have no seams in them. Uh, it's an appeal to a seamless government, and it works well in English too, seamlessness. Uh, and uh, Noda's uh, writing of the character Love uh, has a great deal to do with her own uh, personal story of trying to bear a child, and, and then when her child is born, a, a, a severely uh, disabled child who uh, requires constant care, uh, and her concern, which has led her to be named uh, a, a minister of, of child affairs, uh, about uh, child care and, and uh, about uh, the treatment of children. And then Takaichi is, is incomprehensible. Uh, it, it's uh, a pair of, of, of uh, terms uh, which together don't make any sense. And I assume that it is a dog whistle to possibly members of uh, or, or believers in, in Shinto, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll gladly invite anyone uh, to tell me what it is that that is supposed to be. But I have asked several people and no, don't know what that is. The final effort, uh, a final piece of evidence that uh, what was done was a manufactured uh, situation uh, is the, uh, the speech that uh, Takaichi gave uh, to her support group just prior to the going into the, to the room for the actual election process. Uh, and uh, there's a very, very interesting line in the speech uh, thanking uh, everyone. Uh, thanks to your efforts, my fellow Diet members, we have piled up a big vote total. We have piled them up so high, we're going to smack the predictions of the mass media. Uh, that doesn't sound to me like a jubilation. It sounds like a confession uh, of um, media manipulation. Uh, and when you look at the numbers and think about how things moved, the real story seems to have been is that uh, members of uh, Takayuchi's group uh, lied uh, to all members of the press, not just to left-wing organizations like the Mainichi Shinbun, which I quoted earlier, but also uh, strong supporters of the LDP, the Sankei Shinbun and the, uh, the Yomiuri Shinbun, had all had the same breakdown, just over 30% for Kishida, high 20s for, uh, for Kono, and then just over 20% of the votes will go to Takaichi when in fact it was near 30% at that point for Takaichi. Uh, and, and that uh, the purpose was to humiliate the press, to humiliate uh, the, the mass media. And that everything having to do with the, the candidates, her candidacy was to provoke and uh, to, 
communicate to their particular small group as, and they are a small group. They're no more than 20% of even the members of the LDP are a part of the revisionist uh, camp. Now, a, a last thing to say about uh, the response of the party, and then I'll, 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 I'll stop talking. Uh, this is an image from the LDP itself. This is from their homepage of the new lineup post uh, Kishida election lineup of the executives of the party. Uh, and uh, as a gesture, uh, we have in, in the center here uh, in, in uh, turquoise, uh, there, is, uh, there is Takaichi given uh, what is ostensibly an important post in the party, the Policy Affairs Research Council. Uh, and uh, that, that kind of, granting of, of gifts to uh, defeated rivals is, is very traditional. I would like to say that, however, there is a dark side to this and, and, and it's not exactly as nice a gift uh, as it seems. But more important was the repetition that Kishida made uh, after his election that we as a party have to be working together, the old, the middle, mid-career and the young and no, LDP premier had ever done that kind of repeated constant talk about horizontal divisions, generational divisions in the party. This is brand new. And it's in order to uh, answer uh, the call for greater participation by younger members of the party, uh, there are a few new persons in the, in the cabinet with relatively few. Uh, elections, but for here in this particular image, uh, the picking of uh, young um, o Obuchi, and then uh, immediately uh, to the right, from his point of view, to the left, from our point of view, uh, of the new president uh, is uh, Fukuda Tatsuo, uh, the, uh, who is in, only in his third term, and he's been given an incredibly powerful and important post. Uh, the chairmanship of the general council of the LDP. The general council is where a judicious individual has to allow for final debate over any kind of poly, party policy or party uh, proposed legislation. It requires someone of a, with a great deal of gravitas, with a great deal of judiciousness and openness, and uh, who's widely respected in the party. And, no third termer has ever gotten close to this position before. This is a radical shift uh, and a radical decision. But there again, there's always the backstory. Obuchi uh, in her position, well, she, you know, she and, and Fukuda, they're not really brand new. Uh, they are in fact old goods. Uh, Obuchi, her father was prime minister, and Fukuda, his father, and his grandfather were prime ministers. Uh, the LDP uh, is, uh, an, is an aristocracy. Uh, and uh, my concerns are that uh, for them, not for me, uh, my concerns for them are that they, are, uh, they have locked themselves uh, into an unpopular uh, way of behavior. And if you were talking a week ago, I would have looked like a fool. Uh, and I, I did look like a fool. Uh, but we got over the last few days, the first uh, public reactions, the first public opinion polls about support for this new structure, the new cabinet and, and uh, the new leadership group uh, and the and the overall image of the leader uh, Kishida, and uh, they are dramatically below expectations. Uh, they are uh, in and even friendly uh, media organizations such as the Yomiuri Shimbun were absolutely flabbergasted at how low uh, the the numbers are. Uh, the in the in the case of the Yomiuri, uh, it, it it marked very very broadly and very very loudly. The you know Kishida's popularity ratings are are the, the, the lowest we've seen in 20 years, except for one other time, and that's the first premiership, the only premiership of Asotaro, 
who led the party to its dramatic defeat in the 2009 elections. So there is a, a it's, there's trepidation in the party uh, on, on this day. So uh, are they heading into an election with a beautifully balanced, in terms of an internal uh, politics, uh, leadership structure and, and cabinet? If you look at the, the bios of everyone, you, you say they couldn't have balanced all the different forces in the party more effectively. But at the end of the day, it's whether people show up to vote on voting day and if they're happy with the LDP, and they're not. Uh, so uh, there's going to be an election on October the 31st. If uh, turnout is above 56%, the uh, LDP will suffer serious losses. Not, it will not be defending, uh, it will be losing. And uh, I'll take your questions at this point.